The Chetnik detachments of the Yugoslav army, commonly known as the Chetniks, was a World War II movement in Yugoslavia led by Draza Mihailovic, an anti-Axis movement in their long-range goals and engaged in marginal resistance activities for limited periods. They also engaged in tactical or selective collaboration with the occupying forces for almost all of the war. The Mihailovic Chetniks were not a homogeneous movement. The Chetnik movement adopted a policy of collaboration with regard to the Axis, and engaged in cooperation to one degree or another by establishing modus vivendi or operating as legalized auxiliary forces under Axis control. Over a period of time, and in different parts of the country, the Chetnik movement was progressively drawn into collaboration agreements. First with the Nedic forces in the territory of the military commander in Serbia, then with the Italians in occupied Dalmatia and Montenegro, with some of the Aste's forces in northern Bosnia, and after the Italian capitulation also with the Germans directly. While Chetnik collaboration reached extensive in systematic proportions, the Chetniks themselves referred to their policy of collaboration as using the enemy. Professor Sabrina Ramit, a historian, has observed both the Chetniks' political program and the extent of their collaboration have been amply, even voluminously, documented. It is more than a bit disappointing, thus, that people can still be found who believe that the Chetniks were doing anything besides attempting to realize a vision of an ethnically homogeneous, greater Serbian state which they intended to advance, in the short run, by a policy of collaboration with the Axis forces. The Chetniks collaborated extensively and systematically with the Italian occupation forces until the Italian capitulation in September 1943, and beginning in 1944, portions of the Chetnik movement of Draza Mihailovic collaborated openly with the Germans and Ustasar forces in Serbia and Croatia, Professor David MacDonald, however, posited, in his Balkan Holocausts. Serbian and Croatian victim-centered propaganda and the war in Yugoslavia, that it is highly misleading to suggest that Setniks throughout the war collaborated with the Germans and Italians to carry out genocide of Croats and Muslims. The Chetniks were a partner in the pattern of terror and counter-terror that developed in Yugoslavia during World War II. The Chetniks used terror tactics against the Croats in areas where Serbs and Croats were intermixed against the Muslim population in Bosnia, Herzegovina and Sandak, and against the Yugoslav partisans and their supporters in all areas. These terror tactics took various forms, including killing of the civilian population, burning of villages, assassinations and destruction of property. The terror tactics used by the Chetniks against the Croats were, to at least an extent, a reaction to the mass terror perpetrated by the Ustase. But Croats living in Bosnia and other areas planned to be part of Greater Serbia were to be cleansed of non-Serbs regardless. In accordance with Mihailovic's directive of 20 December 1941, the terror against the partisans and their supporters was ideologically driven. The Muslim population of Bosnia, Herzegovina and Sandak was a primary target to Chetnik terror due to the traditional animosity between Serbs and Muslims and also as countermeasures against Muslim aggressive activities. But this action was also undertaken to cleanse these areas of Muslims in order to create a greater Serbia free of non-Serbs. Etymology The organization was later renamed the Yugoslav Army in the homeland, although the original name was more commonly used. The word Chetnik was used to describe a member of a Balkan guerrilla force called Cheta. The word is derived from the South Slavic word Seta, which means band or troop, itself derived from the Turkish word Sete, of the same meaning, which itself is derived from the Sanskrit word Kakra, meaning a troop of soldiers. The suffix nik is of Slavic origin. It is a personal suffix meaning person or thing associated with or involved in background.
Macedonian struggle The Chetnik movement had its roots in the 19th century Serbian liberation struggle against the Turks, however, the first organization can be traced to 1903, when the Serbian military created a unique training program for individuals willing to implement terrorist activities in Macedonia. At the outbreak of the Alindan uprising in the summer of 1903, Serbia offered material support for internal Macedonian revolutionary organization. After the suppression of the uprising, one of its leaders, Boris Sarafov, was adopted in Belgrade and negotiated there with the authorities. They came to an agreement that Serbian Seta would be sent to Macedonia to conduct combined Serbo-Bulgarian actions against the Ottomans. During the spring of 1904, four setters were equipped, armed and sent from Serbia to Macedonia. There the Chetniks were greeted by the leader of the internal Macedonian revolutionary organization, Bobby Stoichev, who had received orders from Boris Sarafov that he should support them. In June, in several heavy fightings after Turkish ambushes, the IMRO Chetis gave a number of victims. As traitors were suspected local Serbian villages from Kokoshina, during July the bands of IMRO held in the Kokoshina a slaughter and tens of local pro-Serbian-oriented villages were killed. These actions led to a sharp aggravation of the relations between the two organizations. From 1904-08, Chetnik units created strongholds in the Scorpia and Prelep regions after several battles against the Turks and the IMRO, but were unable to extend the territory under their control due to the IMRO presence in other parts of Macedonia. Macedonian Chetniks included Jovan Babunski, Gligor Sokolovic, Ilya Trifunovic Burkanen, Mihailo Ristik Dizavinak, Jovan Gukovic Gapon, Vasilij Trbic, Spazagada, Borovolyo Yovanovic Brana, Ilya Yovanovic Punjski, Jovan Stanokovic Dovizensky, Miko Krstik, Lazar Kujanzic. C. Markovic, Misa Alexic Marinko, Doxam Mihailovic, Kosta Milovanovic Pukanic, Volyin Popovic Vuk, and Sivatij Milicevic Milosevic. After the proclamation of the Young Turk Revolution in 1908 and the proclamation of the Constitution, all of the brigands in Macedonia, including the Serbian Chetniks, put down their weapons. Balkan Wars During the First Balkan War, Chetniks were used as a vanguard to soften up the enemy forward of advancing armies, for attacks on communications behind enemy lines, as field gendarmerie and to establish basic administration in occupied areas. World War I Following the disastrous end to the Serbian campaign in late 1915, some former Chetniks escaped to Corfu along with the retreating Serbian army and government, and ultimately joined the Salonika Front. In September 1916, the Serbian High Command sent Pekanik by air to Mahana to prepare a guerrilla uprising in support of a planned Allied offensive. There, Pekanik contacted several groups of guerrillas, known as Komitaji. Pekanik joined forces with local leader Kosta Voljinovus and they both established headquarters on Mount Koparonik. Rivalry quickly developed between the two leaders, mainly because Pekanik only had orders to prepare to support the planned Allied offensive, but Voljinovus was conducting operations that might result in preemptive action by the Bulgarian occupation forces. Matters came to a head in January, February 1917 when the Bulgarians began conscripting local Serbs for military service. At a meeting of guerrilla leaders to discuss whether they should commence a general uprising, Pekanik was outvoted. However, events had overtaken the leaders, and they were essentially joining a popular uprising that was already underway. After guerrillas under Pekanik's command engaged the Bulgarians he was hailed as a leader of the resistance. Although he had serious reservations about the eventual outcome once the Bulgarians and Austro-Hungarians committed large numbers of troops to subdue, 
the uprising. The guerrillas were closing on Nis in early March when the occupying forces went on the offensive. P. Kanik advised his fighters to hide out in the woods and mountains, while Volyanovis ordered his to fight to the death. By 25 March, the uprising had been crushed. P. Kanik avoided a further offensive by the occupation forces in July by disappearing into the mountains once again, after emerging for a short time. In September, October 1917 P. Kanik again dispersed his guerrillas and infiltrated the Austro-Hungarian occupied zone where he remained in hiding, until mid-1918. Interwar period following the end of World War I and the formation of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. Pro-Bulgarian sentiment was rife in Macedonia, which was referred to as Southern Serbia by the Belgrade government. Extensive measures were undertaken to Serbianize Macedonia, including closing Bulgarian Orthodox Church schools, revising history textbooks dismissing unreliable teachers, banning the use of the Bulgarian language, and imposing lengthy jail terms for those convicted of anti-state activities. Hundreds of Bulgarian activists were murdered and thousands arrested in the period immediately following the war, and around 50,000 troops were stationed in Macedonia. Bands of Serbian Chetniks, including one led by Babunski, were organized to terrorize the population, kill pro-Bulgarian resistance leaders and recruit the local population into forced labor for the army. Resistance by IMRO was met with further terror, which included the formation in 1922 of the Association Against Bulgarian Bandits led by P. Kanik and Ilya Trifunovich Loon, based out of Stip in eastern Macedonia. This organization quickly garnered a reputation for indiscriminate terrorization of the Macedonian populace. P. Kanik and his Chetniks were also active in fighting those resisting the Serb and Montenegrin colonization of Kosovo. The Chetnik movement also functioned as a civilian organization during the interwar period, initially as the Chetnik Association for the Freedom and Honor of the Fatherland, a Chetnik veteran organization formed in Belgrade in 1921. The aims of the organization were to foster Chetnik history, spread Chetnik ideas, and to care for disabled Chetniks and the widows and orphans of fallen Chetniks. Initially the organization was aligned with the Democratic Party, but the increasing influence of the Serbian Radical Party resulted in a split of the organization in 1924, the Pro-Radical Party. Greater Serbia elements of the organization formed two new organizations, the Association of Serbian Chetniks for King and Fatherland, led by Punisar RACIC, and the Association of Serbian Chetniks, Peter M. R. Konic. Around a year later, these two organizations amalgamated as the Association of Serbian Chetniks, Peter M. R. Konic, for King and Fatherland, with RACIC presiding over a great deal of dissension until 1928 when the organization ceased to operate. After the imposition of royal dictatorship by King Alexander in 1929, the Peter M. R. Konich Association was dissolved, and the former dissidents rejoined the original Chetnik Association for the Freedom and Honor of the Fatherland. In 1929, Trifonovic Burkhanen became president of the organization serving until 1932 when he was replaced by P. Kanik who continued to lead the organization until the invasion of Yugoslavia in April 1941. In 1932 the Chetnik organization established chapters in Dalmatia and Slavonia, and in 1934 Serb students at the University of Zagreb launched a Chetnik newsletter. This expansion of what remained a nationalist chauvinist movement outside Serbia proper was a worrying development. As a result of Pekanik's move to open membership of the Chetnik Association to new younger members that had not served in World War I, in the course of the 1930s he took the organization from a nationalist veterans association focused on protecting veterans' rights to an aggressively partisan Serb political organization which reached 500,000 members throughout Yugoslavia. 
During this period, Bukhanik formed close ties with the far-right Yugoslav Radical Union government of Milan Stojadinovic, Trifunovic Bukhanin and others that were unhappy with the aggressive expansion of the organization and its move away from traditional Chetnik ideals and set up the Association of Old Chetniks as a rival organization, but it never challenged the organization led by Pekanik.